So uh, what are we talking about here? This basically, what we talk about here, more or less, is just that this is everything. And when I say it's everything, I just mean it's whole and complete. It's not everything in the sense that it's everything that exists or something. No, this is everything in terms of completion. There is no, no special hidden reality. There is no absolute reality somewhere that we can't see around it or within it or behind it. Um, there isn't a value within that or a meaning or a purpose. There isn't a future to this or a past. All those would be ideas of another reality. That's what the person hopes there is. Something beyond what I'm experiencing. That's the hope. Because within the personal experience, what is experienced doesn't seem to be enough. That's just how it feels within the personal setup. I'm here, I'm experiencing this situation, and something seems to be missing. Somehow, it's not really conscious. The person has no idea what, what's actually missing, but that's just how it feels. <clears throat> and that's when the hope for something beyond arises. So this can't be it. What I'm experiencing right now can't be everything. So there must be more. Somehow, somehow there must be more. And it must be something that I'm not yet aware of. And for the person, then the task is, I have to become aware of what I'm missing. It must be there somehow or somewhere, and I have to, to get to know it. I have to achieve it, or I have to, basically I have to become aware of it. It has to become my experience. And that's basically what the personal life is about. It's just this one question. How should I be? Where should I look? Um, what should I do in the end? Yeah, how should I be? Should I be open? Or what should I do? Disciplined? Or should I meditate? Or should I be receptive? Or whatever. <clears throat> and that's what it's about in the personal world. So there are numerous ideas on what to do or on what not to do. Uh, earn a lot of money, have a family, uh, search for wisdom, go inside heal the past, whatever. And so what we talk about here, what this points to, is that this whole impression to be a separate person, this whole impression that there is someone who experiences something, is unreal. That's what's meant when I say there is no one. It's really this sense of presence that which says to itself, well, I'm here now, I'm aware, I'm experiencing something. I am alive. It's exactly this which doesn't have any substance at all. And this is not logical or something. I can't explain that. But it's this which does not exist. It doesn't have an autonomous existence. And of course, all the consequences that come out of that to be separate, uh, the experience to have lost something, the need to, to search for wholeness, the experience of time and space, and all those things, they are just as illusory as the sense of I am. So in that sense, all there is is what happens. This is the natural but inexperienced reality. This is timeless and spaceless and undivided, and there is nothing missing. But of course, there is also no one who realizes that. So there isn't what happens, and someone realizing that it's whole and complete. That's the dream. This can't happen. So, yeah, that's it, basically. So there is no goal. We won't go on on our paths. There is no one. There is no path. And this is everything. Andreas. Oh. So I just want to, yeah. Oh, we can say more. Uh, no. <laughs> carry on. <laughs> I'm fine. No. I'm left with your question. I'm no. <laughs> carry on after your question. So. There's obviously no usefulness to the sense of being a person. 
Because is that because purely because it's based on an illusory, fictitious reality? Well, yeah, one could say. In the end, it just doesn't exist. Because ultimately, the person, like, say, for example, like, the sense of being a person, they could be living in, like, tension and anxiety, like, on guard against this scary, alien, separate world. But there's no... But that nervousness and anxiousness... Doesn't really yeah, it doesn't serve any purpose. At all. At all, yeah. And I've been watching quite a few of Tony's older videos, like, from, say, 2015 and stuff. And in those videos he talks sometimes about um, in those videos sometimes he talks about what happens is when the brain grows big enough to sophisticate what it sees as a separate world it invents the me to protect itself against what it experiences as a separate world so would you say that uh, no <laughs> you didn't hear the question. <laughs> well, it started with "Would you say?" or yeah. something. I was or, say and I wouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. I'm trying to find a reason, ultimately, for why that that sense of being a person even arises. Yeah, but what uh, what this actually says is that it doesn't even arise. That is the illusion, that there is a sense of separation arising. No, but the sense apparently arises. The person and never and happens. No, the sense also doesn't arise, apparently. Oh, uh, it doesn't arise, meaning it doesn't come. It doesn't come into existence, not even as an appearance. So you could... It's what apparently happens, but it doesn't come into existence. That's why there is no answer. It's the same answer, who am I, why am I? It's just replaced with, why is there an illusion? But it's the same question, like, who am I? And there's just no answer to it, because there is no one. You're really good. <laughs> 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 but I do have a follow up question, Andre. I double your. It was <laughs> <laughs> so convincing. No, I meant it. It's like very good. But anyway, yeah. so <laughs> when you say it doesn't arise, it's what apparently happens. What you're saying is it's a time. It's just timelessly something that seems to happen. Yes, <clears throat> it's a timelessly no thing. And that knowing is dreamt. I am, I exist, there is an illusion, is already dreamt knowledge. Who would, uh, who would be able to know that or discriminate it? Illusion from truth, me from... And so my attempt to give a reason for why it would come is part of me working out my Absolutely. life and what it's about and where it's all going. Yeah, it's okay. already coming out of your presence, so to speak. I'm here, and now I try to work out why I am here, or why there is an illusion. <clears throat> Thanks. Which isn't wrong, but there's just no answer to it, to this question. So. Mm. There's no answer to any question, then. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So why should we ask? Oh, I would <laughs> say that anyone should ask anything. No, there's no suggestion here. So, but the wholeness and completeness can be experienced, but it can somehow be reported. But from yeah, from but only apparently, not really. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because this is not really happening, so the reporting isn't real as well. It's just what seems to be happening. Do you remember what happened yesterday? Oh, I should. <laughs> it was uh, Friday. Well, why? Just fine. I guess there could be memories, of course. Mm. Yeah. Even from like when you were. Before you were born? Uh, no. <laughs> so, uh, 
point where, where you were born and you were old enough to realize I think memory is basically a brain thing. It's just what the brain can do, apparently. Mm -hmm. Remember things. But only if it happens. Not because there is someone who can actually remember. Mm -hmm. Or it's just the brain just comes up with yesterday. What did I do yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. What if you remember everything? What? What if it would hap could happen that you remember everything? That ever happened? Why not? I've, I've, sounds, it, it sounds anything, a bit right? theoretical. Mm -hmm. but it still doesn't mean anything. I have not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would just be yeah. what happens. Fortunately, yeah. I can't get to lot of numbers. You can? I can, you know, if you play lot of uh, yeah. You can't. I can't do that somehow. Yeah, same here. Mm -hmm. I know. That's why we have to sit here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Andreas, I've got a question actually about memory. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking about this before I came, or just before I left the hotel. It seems to me like obviously the person, well at least in my case, I don't know how it is for other people, <clears throat> lives in memory to give it story reality. Do you know what I mean? So I'm constantly remembering things to piece together, like my identity and who I am. Uh, for example, yeah, this is one tool to confirm oneself. In, in the end, the person <coughs> confirms itself in everything. Experiencing is like confirming reality. So it confirms itself in memories, in feelings, in everything, basically. But the question I was saying, because then I thought to myself, so when there isn't anyone, there's no longer that need to be constantly occupied by memory to give confirmation. Oh yeah, of course, no. So not thought, at all, no. So was, my assumption was, when there isn't anyone, memory would only come up if it was necessarily like activated, like there was, <coughs> let's just say, a functional use of it. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But then, I remember like, I think the first time I met you in Brighton, obviously we all hung out together that night, and then the next... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day, little well, snippets. The next, the next day on the Sunday when we were in the meeting, uh, or maybe before the meeting, you were saying that you'd sat around in the morning and remembered what a great night you'd had. So that didn't serve any functional purpose. Oh no, <laughs> no, it just for no. No, it didn't give me anything that I remembered how great the night before was. It was just what it was. So it could just uh, arise out of no need of functioning. <coughs> exactly. That's why I was a bit suspicious when you said only if it's functional or something. I mean, there can just be memories, or yeah, whenever they happen. But they, yeah, they don't serve a purpose, and they don't confirm anything. They don't confirm that there was a past and they don't confirm that there is someone having a memory. That's really strange to say that it doesn't confirm there was a past, because as soon as the memory arises, for me, obviously, that's confirmation something that happened. And it's almost like you can feel how long ago it was, in a way. Well, I can almost feel, OK, that was close. And yes, but that that's, what, that's what I mean. In the end, it's you confirming yourself by experiencing memory. The memory doesn't actually confirm anything. It's just what it is but it's you mirroring it yourself in the memory. This me and the memory, I'm real, this is real. And what it says is the truth, namely that there was a yesterday. And you're right, it just feels like that for the person. I'm here, there is time, I'm here now, there was a past. It just feels like that, as if everything is real. As if it really happened, like there's a truth to the memory. So when you share a story, like, yeah. Sometimes you sat and told me stories from the past. Let's yeah. call it the past. There's no feeling of truth no. to that happening. <clears throat> yeah, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So it's just sharing that memory is just empty words then? Absolutely. The feeling of truth and reality belongs to the sense of a person only. And when the person collapses, this just collapses with it. Just this sense, this feeling that everything is real. It just goes together with it instantly and automatically. There is no secret behind it or something. Which is kind of a surprise because for the person everything feels so real. There just must be something that exists. That's just how it feels. And, and this, this impression can just... As much as you say for the person it feels so real, the person is constantly looking to verify and validate its experience as real. So, on the one hand, the person feels its experience to be real, but at the same time, it's constantly like questioning its own reality in that sense as well. <clears throat> yeah, not really, because it's not questioning reality itself. It's not questioning that there is some kind of reality. It's maybe questioning its story about reality. Because the story that it invents about what's going on never really suits. So it questions its beliefs and its thoughts and then it's... So for the person, its reality and this is reality is unquestioned. Yeah, that there is some kind of reality going on that is in a certain way. That's beyond need for belief or verification. Yeah, it doesn't need belief, exactly. But then it questions its beliefs because they don't always serve it, so it has to adapt. Yeah, and because they don't fit. Because what happens is no thing, and the person constantly thinks it's something. So it can't fit. So One's own stories and beliefs about what happens never fit. Yeah. <laughs> All beliefs have died there. Uh, yes. <laughs> and the idea, uh, well, maybe not, but yeah, kind of. Truths that believes that's what's believed is true or close to the truth or something. Of course. So if you don't tell, you can just tell other stories who sound more funny or something. And you don't have uh, no one because like there is no one there. Mm -hmm. It's not that I know that and that I can act accordingly. There still just is what happens, and so and there's just coming out what comes out, which is not trying to say something, a truth, but also not. But making something else up or instead or something that's not needed. Absolutely, of course. <clears throat> Andreas, when you said no one having, I can't remember exactly what words you used, but like believing anything to be the truth, like that really, like actually, like was so confronting and scary. Because the idea for the person of living without beliefs or knowing how it is, is just too destabilizing or... Yeah, it feels lost maybe, disorientated. And I suppose because obviously I have the impression I'm someone and therefore you are, I then hear that as well there's someone living there without any concept of reality at all. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah, it's really actually hard or impossible for the person to leave itself out. When it hears this message, it's always, okay, it's about to be without story. It's about to be without beliefs, to be without the future or something. And that's not really what's being said here. So do you think the person, its beliefs are the closest thing to it? <laughs> because no, it feels to me, I have no idea. Well, it feels to me like that's almost the most threatening thing that can be taken from me is my belief about reality or my experience of this as something being real. It depends. I mean, some people could say don't search in beliefs, just experience your feelings totally. So this could change the whole dynamic and suddenly the feelings become totally important. 
So it doesn't have to be beliefs, but ultimately what we're probably in our society it's a popular tool to think about the world or one's life. Ultimately what the person's on guard against is just its own sense of presence being threatened. Yeah. And then whatever it attaches to that, whether it's belief or feeling or this or that, it's all superficial really. Yeah. What are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, yes works. <laughs> <laughs> I always said no. But <laughs> This is everything and nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Yes, no, I mean, who cares, basically. Have you ever done an interview with Rupert Spira? No. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't? No. Why not? Why not? Oh, because he wouldn't, I assume that he wouldn't ask about this. What? <coughs> That's all he asks about. Yeah, but I don't mm -hmm. think that he would uh, come to me and ask me about this I message. Okay. But you could go to him and ask. Why? <laughs> yeah, he says the same thing you do. Because he talks about, he says everything is experience. Everything yeah. has to do with experience. And you sort of say that too. So I no, that. basically I say nothing is experience. Uh, nothing I say there is, no ex experience. there is no experience. That's right. what's being said here. Okay. So when Rupert Spira says everything is experience, it's basically... Well, well he, also <laughs> says nothing, he also says nothing is experience. This experience too. Basically, I think it's the same thing as when Tony talks about the beloved or everything is energy. Mm. It's basically, if you listen longer to the guy, it's a little peculiar sometimes. No. sometimes. Mm. Um, that's basically what he says the same thing. Same thing as you're saying, same thing as Tony's saying, same, same thing. All right, yeah, I don't follow Rupert's wire, okay. so. Yeah. You don't need. <laughs> yeah, I don't need. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and my impression is that he was uh, teaching how to get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, that's true. That's uh, true. Uh, yeah. That's why uh, I stopped going, listening to him all the time. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think so. some words might conceptually sound very similar, mm. but I don't see any okay. <coughs> connection. Yeah. Mm. I mean, you also, that there is no me. This word, I mean, there are a lot of teachings around this sentence. So you could also come up and say, well, this teacher also says there is no me. Yeah, yeah okay. But then it turns out what they mean with that to not believe in the personal story and stuff. But of course, so you'll find numerous teachers who say there is no me, which then sounds like it's the same like this. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if there's kind of a teaching attached to it, 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 it actually points that what we talk about here is a concept for them, a goal, something that at some point can mm, be realized. Yeah. So, well, the focus is on, but now you have to practice. Mm. Sure. So that's yeah. where the actual focus is on. In a teaching, and then it's mm. and that's what I would say. Apparently, it's not the same, mm -hmm. but it's equally whole and complete, mm -hmm. so. and useless. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <coughs>
inside your brain still thoughts come up? <coughs> um, yeah, I guess so. It's <coughs> not like totally silent till somebody asks you something. Oh no, I mean apparently the body is alive, so there is a, a functioning brain. I'm happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the future. Oh, right. <laughs> but in the end, no one knows really, because there is no observer or experiencer. So <clears throat> it would just be what apparently happens for no one. So no one knows really, is there a brain, are there thoughts? Andreas, obviously the whole sort of game and energy of the individual is about survival. Well, and hopefully finding fulfillment, but ultimately survival. Yeah, survive until then. Survive mm -hmm. until fulfilled. Yeah. That's the mission. That's why people reinvent the whole story of more lifetimes, isn't it? Yeah. If I don't find it now, I'll have a chance, hoping a future lifetime to find it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. You just say yes to me now. I know, I mean, in, in a way, it's what the person also, it's a concept, I think, that comes from the person's experience. Because in a way, it dies every night and is reborn every morning. So it could just be a concept of death and rebirth that comes out of this experience. But then it also serves a purpose that it can stretch out endlessly, of course. Mm. You can see more stressless, because you have so much time. Yeah, so. mm. right. Mm -hmm. My actual question though was like, what amazes me about the person is that it thinks its methods that it uses everywhere else are also going to work here. Uh, that's all it can do. It'll approach this message in the same way it approaches life itself. And that is by seeking, and that's by seeking in its own way. So, yeah, of course, what else? Well, my whole thing is seeking reassurance, and my method is just to go on and on and ask. Ask questions, understand. Whatever. Yeah, understand. It's, a, yeah. it's incredible how the person really thinks. Andre, I'll get it from Andreas eventually. <laughs> he keeps telling me he's got nothing for me, but I will <laughs> get it. And <laughs> it just isn't here at any point that it's failing, like it's futile. Well, yeah, but that's exactly how the person seeks small steps. I get little insight, a little bit of knowledge here, a little bit insight here, and I'm collecting them until it's enough. Yeah. And even part of me, I'm sorry, wants to prove you wrong, because I do think, like... Well, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> because I think, like, well, he tells me I won't get anything from him, but I'll show him. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I will squeeze something out of this. I'm not here for nothing. Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you can see it very clearly. Like not that there's no, a you. I'm just I'm just simply not there. I don't see anything clearly or know anything. No, but I mean like all the games that the individuals come and play. Well, usually they just tell me. Okay. So <laughs> you just tell me what's going on there. So. How 
come to be so scared of not being there? Well, to be honest, there is no real explanation for that. It's just what seems to be happening. But of course, in the story, one could say, somehow it thinks or it feels as if first I have to accomplish a mission and that is somehow arrive. As if it would just feel like it's too early now. <coughs> now it would feel like right in the middle of life. If you would have to die now, it's a bit like, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh, not yet. Well, wait a moment. Um, I haven't come to a good end yet. I haven't arrived yet. So if I would die, die now, all my efforts would have been wasted. All the hours that I tried to be conscious and <laughs> peaceful and polite to the neighbors. And <laughs> The, the, all of this would just have been for nothing, as if this is an absolute no-go. But there isn't a real reason for that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Because it's dreamt, of course, that I'm here, that I'm on a path, that I have to fulfill my mission to become a fulfilled me. That's completely dreamt, of course. It's just how it feels, how it seems to feel. No, not yet. I still have to do something here in this world, in my life, for me, for others, whatever. Have to stay. <laughs> but this just happens. When you do something, it just happens. Absolutely, yeah. And when I go, say I go to Portugal, uh, so I think I said I go to Portugal, but uh, it just happened. Exactly. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And last year, I was on the station in ha in Hanover, and I broke my leg. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> One year later. Same time, I go to Hanover <laughs> station, <laughs> and a woman uh, is uh, directly falling before me as the stairs to into me. All right. Same station. One. So, <clears throat> this, I make a story when I say, "Oh, uh, Hanover station is a, a difficult." A uh, <laughs> 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 For me, I never go there. And, uh, Last year, and th that's a story, and that's the story, but both... That would just be what just be. apparently happens. Just happened. You or this mm -hmm. thing, having yeah. those thoughts about yeah. the station of... No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There just isn't anything mm -hmm. which is actually true. This would just be what happens. And of course it's a story, mm -hmm. but it's not that there is another truth to it. No. There's just what happens not being real. <clears throat> There's just sitting in a room not being real. That's it. And this includes, so to speak, thoughts and feelings and anything. The impression to be someone. But when nothing is true, also that there's nothing beyond is also not true. Uh, yes. But of course there is nothing here in the first place. So, of course, this idea of beyond starts with there is a here and there is no here.
address. Oh, you're really doing. I mean, you might have said this in the past. So sorry <coughs> if I didn't listen, but <coughs> all you're doing apparently mm -hmm. is reporting what already is. Yes, if you want so, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, that's not what the person's. That's well, not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing he's showing me something I can read. Mm -hmm. Exactly, as if I'm somehow trying to tell you something. Desperately. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, as if there is some message that this is about something. And it's just not the case. So it's the same as literally you sitting in silence. I mean, obviously, like, yes. we ask a question, or there, there could be a question asked, and there's a response apparently coming back, apparently. Yeah, which but is holding complete, but there's nothing in it. It's no different to you not saying a word. Yeah. Because because it already is? Timelessly. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this doesn't only apply to me, actually. It does apply also to anyone. No, but other speakers who aren't... Oh, they also nothing. aren't saying anything. They just claim that they are saying something, but it's equally <laughs> useless. <laughs> <laughs> but of course they wouldn't say, oh no, listen to me, it's useful for you. You will learn a lot and <laughs> you'll be fulfilled after listening to me enough. <laughs> Which is, no, it's equally empty. It still adds nothing to what's happening. Absolutely, and it doesn't add fulfillment. Nothing adds anything? Nothing adds fulfillment. It's an impossibility. It doesn't happen. But there's an attraction to listen to this. <laughs> which is wholly complete already, but it also doesn't add fulfillment. The person, yeah, thinks that that's useful. That and that it yeah. somehow adds fulfillment. In small portions, maybe. <laughs> step by step. And it just doesn't do it. Nothing can provide that. Well, Andres, um, as a exposes the the energy I think you know, like kind of undresses it or exposes it. I find that a positive thing. You find that positive. Thing? I find it positive that um, I've come to a place that I hear the me energy being exposed. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it kind of like I have a compatibility with people, you know? but it's still. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, a residence, a residence. Oh, that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't create more fulfillment or more wholeness. And that's also all right. Because it already is whole and complete. I find it helps the um, the, you know, when the me energy is spinning in your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> so I mean, the, in the end, the moment the idea comes in that it somehow helps you on your path or on your way to be. Yeah. So it's again connected to the idea that there is something that's really better, mm. which is the idea of more fulfillment. Uh, which isn't wrong, it's just not what happens really. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is like, we could be all inside in the pub now or whatever, we could be all of working, we're all here doing this. And I like it, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, right now. <laughs> yeah, well, I, just... yeah, so uh, I mean, all of that is what seems to be happening, but mm. the one who says, I'm sitting here and I'm experiencing this and this helps me, this one isn't real. That's all. And that's all right. It doesn't matter that there is no one. Mm. It's just like that already, so to speak. Well, yeah, perfect. That's it. But Andreas, can't there be kind of a joy arising? In your oh, totally. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. If, if this yeah. impression is nice or funny or mm. joyful, oh, oh, that's whole and complete already. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. And uh, as long as there is the sense of a person, the person would on top say to itself, oh, this helped me a lot to come up 
a lot. I don't know. But this helped me because I felt better than before. And this was good on my part. And it would instantly conclude, oh, next time I'll go there again. Yeah. And so it created a religion. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was to feel joy and to be joyous about it is already howling complete, of course. <coughs> like leaving the place afterwards and get angry about the parking ticket or... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the person would say, well, this took away all the joy that I gained here, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Andreas would have been more relaxed, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> Do you even have a car? Well, yeah, yeah. Apparently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no one driving. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all those scratches come from. <laughs> but is this meeting like, for example, old leaves from a tree fall down and there's wind coming and putting them together at a place? Like, no, no one behind it who decided to go there, it's just happening like, please. Uh, yes, so. ap apparently, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. So there is no one doing anything, neither a person or a god or some kind of divine intelligence, that's, that would all be those, this reality that we can't see, but that's maybe there. Some, yeah, some, some creator or something. I still think there's something like that, like a intelligence, maybe not a person, but some yeah, some, some kind of intelligence. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. Well, it's not that I'm here thinking that there is no intelligence behind it, so there's just no one here, and then there's no, no comprehension of a deeper reality at all. I mean, there's no comprehension of, of this reality, <laughs> also. Andreas, I want to try and distinguish something. I know that's not what these meetings are for, but I'm trying to. So, you know, like, we talked, um, like, before the meeting on Sunday at Verona, about, you were saying, like, the relief that comes out of this message is a lasting relief. It's just not for someone. No, that's what you said to me. <clears throat> yeah. You said your impression is that the relief that can come out of this method is a lasting relief. Well, it, kind of. I know what I, yeah. Yeah, I, I said I think that. I know what you mean. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, it's for no one. That's why it's lasting. No, but what I mean is... So, <laughs> like, <laughs> so like, the relief that me experiences in seeking. So let's say you seek and you think you've got a bit of what you wanted and you think, I can rest for five minutes or whatever. <clears throat> That to me feels like a good bit of relief, but that isn't lasting relief because then the next five minutes later it's seeking just as intensely as it did before. Coming to these meetings over apparent time, there, there could be a relief from seeking where the seeking is not as intense as before. Yeah, my impression is, uh, but it's not because of this message or because there is a process. Mm. But my impression is what can happen is just that the energy runs out of the seeking dynamic in a total. And that's probably what I meant with lasting. What the seeker is doing is just replacing one experience with the other one. And it's just instantly over, so to speak. And there is no real, the seeking energy itself just goes on with the same intensity. So that's just like 
what the me thinks it got out of seeking is the illusion of relief, would you say? Yeah, of course. There's never a relief for the person. It's completely illusory. That's what I mean. The best thing the person gets are those moments of having arrived, of having a break from seeking. But uh, there is no end of being me. It's just a good moment. It's just a moment where I have the impression of, ah, now I understood something. Now I found something. Now I work for eight hours so I can rest for ten minutes. Ah. Hmm. And it always but that's just within the same dream. Well, what I was going to say is because to, to me, like to the person, it feels like a genuine relief. But what's good about what you put it out there is it does always need a story attached to it. Oh, completely. It and it's always relief. relative to the seeking before. Mm. In, I mean, that's basically the dance that the person is in doing, resting, doing, resting. And it thinks that the resting has something to do with what we talk about here. And that there is a final resting at the end. Mm -hmm. That's what they would call enlightenment or retirement. <laughs> 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 Depending if you are in a spiritual world or in a. <laughs> so the kind of relief here, like, let's, I know you don't want to use the term lasting relief, but it's, let's say lasting relief, it doesn't need a story attached to it. Yeah, and it's not an experience of relief. It's not an experience. It's not a, no one experiences that relief. But my impression is that just the energy can run out of the seeking dynamic at all, um, in, in total, so to speak. You say it's not an experience of a relief. Yeah, no. But well, there's still a person there, and that kind of relief is happening. There is, like, the body calms down, the neurosis calms down. So. The person can own that as an experience. It would, yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah. Well, it thinks it owns that. Yeah. Well, I don't mean that this message can create a lasting experience of relief. Of course not. I thought something totally inappropriate. I won't say it. <laughs> I won't. Thank you. Can I say it, Andreas? <laughs> Are you relieving us all? What? <laughs> Are you relieving us all? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there is no one. <laughs> there is no one. <clears throat> I mean, of course, what we talk about here, apparently, of course, is that the seeking dynamic it can just stop. I mean, there is no reason why it should go on. It doesn't have to go on. It can just stop and not be replaced anymore. Of course. It's not some far away concept that the seeking can stop. It's not a theory or something. It can really just be over or slow down or whatever, not because it has to and not because it creates a better experience for someone, but apparently it's just possible. And it's more than possible, it really happens, well you can say it really happens, but it, it Well in the happens. story apparently one could say exactly, it really happens. It's not something, another idea or a concept that someone tells itself to, to make oneself feel good. No, apparently it's just possible that, as we said, that the energy runs out of this seeking dynamic and it's not replaced anymore by more and more and more beliefs and <coughs> apparently weirder beliefs and stuff. No, mm -hmm. it can just end without replacement. There is no obstacle or anything. Of course, no one can do it. And it's not a goal or something. Of course it? not. But it's, what I really liked, you said it to me the most recent time in Brighton, was it happened despite me trying, not, but not because of it. Oh yeah, of course. 
and that's the amazing, the person is adamant in my case anyway it happened because i tried like well only that's that's how it feels for the person that gives hope <laughs> i know mm. shouldn't have said it. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I shouldn't have said that It's a happening or just related to a person. Again? A happening. Is it related to a person? Like something is happening or going to happen or happening? Uh, yes, absolutely. Process. The person is the feeling of happening. Yeah. Of existence, of something happening. Yeah. It's the same. You can't yeah. separate those so, two. So like falling away or whatever. It also sounds like happening. It's you know, it, again, and that's the only way it can sound for yeah. the person. Yeah, as if it's another happening that can really happen in this real world. Yeah. And in the end, to someone. And in the end, the happening is the is an illusion in a way. Exactly. The feeling, this impression, this energetic feeling that something is happening, that there is an existence. Yeah. Only. But nothing here, so to speak, knows that it happens. There's no experience of happening for anything except for the illusion of self-awareness, which says to itself constantly, I'm happening, I'm here, <laughs> there is something. And if that becomes a bit more impersonal, it's not I'm happening, it's there is something, I, I feel it, I can, I can grasp it, but there is something. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know what I think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there's no foundation. That, that's what I mean. It's not that there is really something happening. It's not that it's somehow confirmed by anything, that the walls say, you are a me and there is, I'm happening. Or stuff. It's only coming from this sense of self-awareness that feels like I'm happening and it kind of projects itself onto everything on the wall, oh, the wall is happening, I see it, my thoughts are happening, I'm aware of them. In a way that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You can't explain at all to the person how this is both happening and not happening. Yeah. <clears throat> There's nothing you could say that would make any of that make any sense in the personal reality. Yeah. I mean, you can't talk to the person at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not there. So. Well, the reason I ask that is because obviously you can't speak to an illusion or it's impossible. But the whole apparent world is illusions talking to other illusions, confirming that they're real. <laughs> well, that seems to be happening to a certain degree. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets more and more exhausting, I suppose, within that setup. Hmm? For people, like you experience something as people talking to other people, trying to, it just gets more and more exhausting, doesn't it? That whole heaviness of that. That's irrelevant, sorry, yeah. I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> the point I was trying to make was, 
as soon as the person sees this as something real, it has to be about something, it has to have a purpose. Uh, yes, because otherwise it would just feel, it would just be thrown back onto itself and that doesn't feel nice. So if I know why I'm sitting here, I can sit here. <laughs> yes, it makes it acceptable. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. It's okay it's to a sit method. here if I'm going to get... Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a method. The moment I can assume that it serves a re or that I'm here for something, mm -hmm. I don't even have to know what it is. It'll be good for something. Mm -hmm. Oh, then I'll... Ah, all right, good. So <laughs> now, with this set, I can listen carefully. <laughs> Mm -hmm. is the same. Well, yeah, being here for nothing is it feels about say it feels a bit more <laughs> <laughs> really for nothing. Because obviously I'll never be able to know what it was like in a glimpse if it's not something that was experienced. But in a glimpse there is what's happening and it's also not have like it there's seemingly something going on, it's just not confirmed as real. But there's just no need for it to be about anything or have a purpose. It's and in that way of it not being about something, it's completely free. Yes. Yeah, just the, like sitting in a room. Yeah. <laughs> but it's completely minute, free. You say it's completely free, and yet the minute it becomes about something, it's immediately not free. Well, it's still free, but not for the not within the dream of a person. It limits it to an object. Only apparently, only within its own world. I mean, nothing is ever limited by anything, but the person would live in the illusion of limitation. So why is experiencing everything as an object? Again? Why is it that experiencing everything as an object so imprisoning then? <coughs> well, it's just what seems to be happening. Mean, there's no answer to it, uh, because it's not really happening. In the end, there is no real prison. That's the funny thing. So. No, but it's a sense of being imprisoned yeah. by this being something. Yeah. <laughs> but there is no difference between the illusionary me or person and the melting or disappearance of it. Because there is nothing, there can't be a difference. Yeah, yeah, one could say so. Yeah, there is no one, in, no one imprisoned in the <coughs> illusion of me, and there is no one liberated when this illusion collapses. Yeah, both is whole and complete <coughs> for no yeah. one. Like it's already the case, but sometimes often um, that there is a, a kind of position. Yes. yes. Uh, what's the question? Yeah. It's also apparently, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So once that a person doesn't want to feel the um, vulnerability, can you say something about that? Well, because I think that's all. That's a story. Yeah, of course, it's, it's a no, story. It's not necessary at all. Which one? 
to feel the full vulnerability? Oh no. Uh, well, no. Who can do that? On the other hand, of course, the person always. I mean, the person. I mean, the person feels separate from everything, and of course, it wants to stay separate from everything. So it, that's why it wants to control feelings. It doesn't want to let them play out freely. It wants to control them. But there is no answer to that. That's the thing. There is no better way to be. I don't say you should feel your feelings. But of course, for the person, feelings are always something that I need to survive. So I need to somehow keep them separate or control them. Like everything else, of course, I need to control them. So the person wants to be strong and survive this moment. Oh no, of course not. Oh no. No. That's all right. Would you say we're like a drop in the ocean? Yeah, yeah. why not? <laughs> I mean <laughs> I mean there's no drop anymore, that's the thing. So there's just an ocean, and the ocean doesn't know about itself being the ocean. It doesn't say to itself, I'm the ocean. <coughs> but yeah, sitting, this is the ocean. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can you just uh, say your thoughts loud when we don't ask questions? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So. Andreas, what I find quite surprising. Sorry. <laughs> no time without questions. Oh, yeah. well, you're about to open up. <laughs> yeah, I'm slow in opening up. <laughs> What's surprising to me is like, because the me is always looking for guidance, and I think you said before it either looks within or outside, mm -hmm. but irrelevant, different characters, different methods, but. Because the means always looking for guidance, it thinks I'll no longer need guidance when I know what to do or how to do it. Uh, yes, but in a funny way, then it would say I'm the total guidance. Then yeah. I know everything, so I can follow me. Don't follow you? me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can finally follow me. <laughs> follow. And it might tell others to follow it as well. Uh, yeah, of course. But what's this? It's a surprising thing. It's like it's called teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I never had that, unfortunately. Uh, but they also, also follow them. other teachers. Yeah. So. But what's surprising is the end of the need for guidance is total unknowing. Yes. So that body apparently does what it does. Yeah. And let's just say perfect. I mean that too, but... Yeah, but I wouldn't <laughs> call this perfect functioning, but I'd say that functions more effectively. Well, perfect. I mean, yeah, the surprise is that it is perfect. It has nothing to do with the person's idea of perfection. The surprise is that it's perfect. The body right? functions perfectly without any knowing of what is being done or what the body's doing. Uh, yes. I mean, uh, in part of this deeper reality, I'm someone, I'm on a path, there's a real world, I want to become fulfilled. I mean, in a way, that's what all the orientation is about in the end. How can I survive as long as possible in order to become fulfilled? Uh, Something, uh, well, I'll share it anyway. Something's been happening to me recently that's been very startling. So I've had severe OCD since I was little. So say I left a room, I've checked the light switches like 20, 30 times, check all the switches are off 20, 30 times before I can leave the room. And recently I've been having a lot of glimpses where I don't know if there's been checking going on or not, but there's no one 
and then I leave the room and suddenly the me comes back and goes, fuck, did you check all of that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I've been even more like at it, do you know what I mean? Because it's like, there's no one there to check, has it been done perfectly? You know what I mean? Well, you just don't need anyone. Yeah. There's no, you don't need a me to do that. But of course there can be knowing or thoughts that, oh, I checked it three times, so it would just be ideas, thoughts that happen. But like the body itself, it checks all the time. For example, is there enough water inside them or not? I do a make a sense of be thirsty or something, mm -hmm. checking all the time. Really? But I think so. I learned oh. it in biolo biology. biology. Yeah. Uh, but at the end, you cannot help that the function will grow. Maybe it realized I don't get enough air or something and then... Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm not sure if I'm completely <laughs> with you, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing would change anything anyway. It's like checking all the time till it collapses. Well, yeah, there will be a living body that's interested in its survival for no reason, actually, um, until the body dies. And of course, the me on top will live in the illusion that I have to do everything. And also until it collapses. Yeah. Maybe after two. Maybe. After two. <laughs> after two? Afterwards. 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 Gone. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But no one's going anywhere. Yeah, no one's here. Mm. Yeah, that's the dream. I'm now here. Is the dream yeah. the the experience of I'm now here. I'm aware of it. I supposed to say? It's the only thing that makes sense in life is tea time. <laughs> tea time. <so. laughs> Are we already there? I want to. Maybe not quite. Pardon. Five minutes. <laughs> but we have to push through. <laughs> <laughs> would linger on. Yeah. Would you say a lot of the heavy neurosis that is associated with the me that would obviously collapse in a glimpse or so called liberation is coming out of this constant need to make everything good again in a way. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, just I don't have, have no idea. Answer. I'm just speculating because it seems to me like this whole... Yeah, it's speculation. The yes, speculation maybe. I have is that this whole pressure, mm. like something's wrong and I've got to make it good, the neurosis is almost something it kind of relies upon to try and deal with that. Yeah, oh pressure. yeah, of course. Yeah, maybe it's a tool mm. and a parent. And a pair would only be a parent. Yeah, but, mm. and it's something to be busy with, kind of. And then in the end, when there's no one dealing with life, 
Mm. There's no need for neurosis to cope or manage it. Yes, but well, there's also nothing there which needs them to drop. But my story would be, I think, there's just no one there anymore that wants to sustain them. But there's no one choosing how much they linger on or not. I think that's quite unpredictable in the end. But yeah, I would say so, the need to keep them up. Because in some way or the other, the person probably assumes that they are needed. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the neurosis to get it through stressful times, especially. Yeah. Oh, this is a really difficult situation. Yeah. And then it's almost like the neurosis is like really amplified as a way to cope. Yeah. Absolutely. So that I can get through it. Mm. Yeah, because they are already experienced. And of course, the person wants to use what it experiences, whatever that is. Yeah. So when there is no one anymore. Uh, the, they at least don't need to be used anymore for anything. And by trying to use it, it's like constantly fueling Confer it? Yeah, one could say so, yeah, giving it attention, fueling mm. it, trying to use it, or trying to fight <coughs> against it, mm. which is also kind of using it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so all of that is not conscious, really. I mean, it's an, it's a, it, this too is an impersonal dynamic, of course. So it's not someone doing on purpose. But it's like something. an apparent loop. In a way, like apparently, just yeah. constantly feeding itself. In a way, well, that's the only thing the me would do anyway. What do you mean, feed itself on what it experiences? Yeah, exactly. And keep of course, it, it wants to be there. I mean, that's everything. The only thing the me wants is to be there, in order to become fulfilled later on. So, of course, that's its life, basically. How do I survive this moment? in order to maybe find something in the next month. Let's have a break. <laughs> 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 <laughs>